Hey everybody, Ann here. And I got my homemade emoji pillow with dog hairs on it too. Um, I'm just, you know, my 8 inch memory foam mattress kicking back, relaxing. It's very windy outside and it's a little chilly, so I'm in the van. I did go and get my hair cut, kind of fixed a little bit. It's short, but now it'll just grow. Now it'll just grow and hopefully it'll just be lovely. Well, anyhow, so I was trying to figure out what I was going to talk about today, and I think I can, I think I want to talk about how I have changed as a result of van life. Number one, I've lost 30 pounds, and I wasn't even working out at Planet Fitness, I just went to, to take a shower. I've lost 30 pounds, and I think it's because I'm moving more, I'm more active, I am out of my, my house more than I ever have been. Um, I'm not doing a whole lot of sitting around. My days are full. Even if I don't work a full day, because I, I, I mean, I've really scaled down how much I'm working. I'd rather just not work at all and just go gallivanting all day and all night. <laughs> but, um, so I've lost 30 pounds and um, that was unexpected. I didn't even know it. I wasn't even trying. Um, and I stepped on a, on a scale and yep, it's it's true I have lost that weight so yeah next thing is um, I'm kind of I'm, I've kind of developed into a hermit like I don't like a lot of people around me I don't like to I mean when I, I had the apartment I was just sticking to the apartment I didn't even want to leave the apartment to be honest with you I didn't I didn't like being out there in the world and you know what that's not you know I don't think that's where I need to be right now in my life I think that I need to be getting out I need to be doing some things I need to not isolate myself because I don't think that's good for, for anybody's mental health really to to be honest with you um, especially for somebody who's suffered from depression and I have a history of depression um, I used to have to take medicine for it it was really bad after my brother died it was terrible. Um, after my sister died, instead of doing self, you know, defeating things and, you know, um, just doing things to my body that were harmful, I decided, you know what, I'm going to go out and live. I'm going to live. I'm going to do things I want to do. You know, I know I still have to work. I'm not independently wealthy. I don't have a big nest egg. But... I, I didn't want to work as much as I was before. Um, I wanted to enjoy my life more. And, you know, I had plenty, been planning the tiny house slash van thing for a couple of years. And I thought, you know what? This is the time. So after my sister's death recently, it's been a little over three months ago. And I've been in the van a couple months. Um that's what kind of spurred the whole thing and it's just pushed me out and it's making me be more social and I'm not very good at being social I'm kind of one of those really socially awkward people <laughs> you know I mean I, I never know if I'm going to say the wrong thing and most of the time I, I don't know I only know after the fact after I've said something just you know weird I, I'm a weirdo that's that's all there is to it um and so I'm I mean I get, it makes me anxious to be around a lot of people and uh, that is slowly eroding, especially when you go to campgrounds, because people are going to be, it doesn't matter if it's a campground and if it's a pay campground, especially, there's going to be all kinds of people all up in your face. You know, they just, they, they're not going to leave you alone. I mean, that's just the way that campers are these days. They are very social. I am a not social camper. And I don't know, I don't think there's that many people out there like that. Uh, me personally, I go camping. I want people to leave me alone. Don't, don't approach me in your golf carts. But the people who have persisted have kind of gotten through and have made me realize that, you know, if these people are persistently trying to talk to me and contact me and be around me, then I couldn't be that objectionable of a person, right? So I think I, instead of just thinking, in terms of, oh my God, these people are annoying me. I wish they'd leave me alone. I, I have flipped it around. And I instead think, well, if these people keep trying to be around me, there could be a reason. It doesn't matter if it's just out of curiosity. They want to know what I'm doing in this band. Um, 
it doesn't matter. It's just the fact that they keep, you know, if, if I was a totally object objectionable, they would probably not want to approach me. So, you know, that part, that part is kind of a positive thing, I would say. I think that's positive. So, so number one, I've lost weight. Number two, I'm becoming more social. Um, number three, I am slowly but surely. I mean, I've always said, oh, I don't care what people think. But the truth is, my whole life, I have cared deeply about what people think. Um, because I was constantly trying to win my mother's approval. And I never got it. So, you know, that kind of carried off into my personal life and professional life, too. Just trying to, you know, do things so that people will think good thoughts about me, you know. Um, so I was kind of like grasping or searching or reaching for something that I was never going to get. Never going to get. Um, because it doesn't matter how much approval I get from other people. I'm still trying to ruin that approval from my mother. And she never gave it to me. And she never will give it to me. I never had her full approval for anything. I mean, it was like jumping through hoops to please her. Sometimes so that she wouldn't beat me. Sometimes it was so that she wouldn't beat my siblings. But I was constantly trying to jump and entertain and just excel and succeed just to win my mother's affection. So anyhow, going out into the world, that's what I did for years. I'm finding though through van life, you know what? You don't need anybody's approval because Right off the bat, people are going to dis disapprove of you and what you're doing. They're not going to understand why would you live in a van. I mean, that's awful. I mean, what do you, what, how do you poop? You know, how do you stay clean? It's all those same stupid, ignorant questions. And it's like the answer is always, I do it just like you do. Okay? I poop. You know, I, I, I usually get into a squatting position somewhere <laughs> and, uh, you know, it just kind of comes out, you know, these, these good bowels that I have in my family, you know, we never have trouble with, with, uh, moving them anyhow, too much information I know, but anyhow, so van life is helping me to not be so concerned about winning the approval of other people because I know I'm never going to get it, um, People will never understand this. And so if you're getting into van life and you want people, and if you, and if you think that people are going to like hop on board, your family, your friends, your co-workers, um, don't expect that. People are, are going to reject all of your positive notions about van dwelling. So it's kind of, I don't know, in a backhanded sort of way, it's kind of bolstered my my confidence really um, and it's helped me to understand that I don't need everybody else's approval to be happy um, because I know people are going to know that I'm in this van and I know that they're going to think negative thoughts about that so I set it aside you know if you're going to get into van life you have to accept that people will not understand and you have to like move beyond that to find your happiness and that's what I've done I mean I really really have just found simple happiness another thing my next thing how many is that like one two three three maybe three i don't know is anybody counting are any of you counting i hope you're counting the next one is i have learned that i need even less than i originally imagined to survive and be happy um i've gotten rid of a lot of things i got rid of a cast iron dutch oven i got rid of that mini dash sorry uh gypsy lady uh uh what is that? Gypsies? God, I can't remember the name of anybody. I'm terrible. Um, the little dash, the electronic thingy that looks like a little cookie maker or whatever, it just didn't work out for me, so I donated it to Goodwill. Um, I got rid of... Oh, <laughs> I didn't even get to show you guys this. Um, I used to make wine, and so I thought, oh, you know, I'm going to... I'm going to... I want to make some moonshine. I want to distill some, some uh, wine, and... Um, you know, I did. I tried it and it was terrible. So, you know, but I kept this little steel. It was just like a, I think like a four or five gallon stock pot that had been modified. It had a little worm and it had a little, you know, a worm box and everything. I mean, you could use it to distill water. So I figured I was going to keep it to distill water. Um, but you know what? I don't, I don't need it. I, I don't need it. It took up a lot of room. I mean, seriously, a five gallon pot, um, 
it just it just didn't work. It didn't work at all. Um, so I donated that to Goodwill too. The guy, the guy taking the donation, kind of looked at me like, hmm. I said, well, you can distill essential oil, distill water in it. Um, I got rid of. Well, I replaced the cooler. I had the big tall one with the little spout at the bottom, and I replaced it with the electronic, the 12 volt one. But um, I've gotten rid of so many clothes. I've gotten rid of like decorations that I was gonna put up all over the van. I mean. It's crazy. Uh, food, I've gotten rid a lot of a lot of the food um, that is that was like dehydrated or whatever stuff that I'm just I'm never gonna eat it. So I've also learned that I need very very little. Okay, and the next thing is also when you are living in such a small space like this, you have to think, where am I gonna put this? For instance, today I was at this. Well, I was at the. I was at all these. I'm always at all of these. And they had these little tray thingies that you put over your lap. You can put a drink thingy in it, you know, like a, a little lap tray thingy, whatever. Um, and it was only five bucks. And I thought, God, you know what? That would be cool. It's kicking back on my bed. Um, just have that over me. And I thought, God, you know what? So it's cool when it's on your lap and you're using it. But where are you going to put it afterwards? You're going to just put it off to the side? I mean, I don't have the room. Eventually, I'm going to show you some of the adjustments that I've made in the van. Um, but it's it's not enough new to really make a whole video of it. But anyhow, so I decided, you know what? I don't really need that. I had already bought a little table that I can put right next to my bed that I can put stuff on that that works just fine. You know, and then buying buying things that you you use, but before you use up the last bit. Like for instance, I I like to wash my hair and my body with baby wash. It's just very mild. You can use it on your body like a body wash. You can use it as a shampoo and it's very mild and I like it the way it, it makes my hair smell. Um, so I'm almost out of it, but I thought, you know what? I could go ahead and just grab another bottle now, but why do that when you still have a quarter of a bottle left? It's gonna be probably, you know, a few days before you are gonna need it. Um, you know, need to replace the bottle and you don't have the room for an extra bottle. Uh, so it just kind of keeps me, van life has kept me from buying stuff that I just don't, I don't need yet. I don't need it all or I don't need yet. So I won't buy two or three bottles or something or, for, you know, like the, a four pack of the baby wipes or whatever. Um, because I just don't have the room. I buy what I need. And I'm just out and about so much, and I'm always close to stores one way or the other. Um, so I will just wait till I'm completely out, and then I will go. Um, I will go, and I just got a message on this that said recording while battery is charging may blah blah blah. Then the message went off. I don't know what it means. I don't care. Um, it may decrease the quality or whatever. Um, sorry if it does, but. Um, so yeah, that's another thing. It has teach, it has taught me not to buy more than I absolutely need because I just don't have the room. God, I'm not even, I'm not even in the middle of the camera. That's a weird, weird angle. Anyhow, um, so I don't buy more than I actually need today. Now, if I'm going on a long camping trip, of course I might buy, you know, a little bit more just to make sure that I'm, I'm, I'm going to have enough for the whole time. But, um... And I think twice about getting stuff. You know, I don't just grab everything. And before I leave the store, I look at my basket and I look, do I need it? Do I need that? Do I really need that? Do I need that? And most of the time, I end up putting stuff back because I just don't need it all. So, anyhow, um, I think that's, a, that's pretty much what I've learned so far, that I, I need less. Um, I buy less. I've lost weight. Um, I'm becoming more social and um, I've learned to not care so much about winning the approval of others because if that's how you lead your life just to get approval for others well that's pretty stupid life it is it's not living for yourself it's not living for your dreams or or what your goals or aspirations are so stop caring what other people think. Well, unless they, they are like your boss and they pay you money. You care. You're going to care about what they think. But as far as you as a person, as an individual, you just got to do what you got to do. And don't worry so much about 
whether or not people are going to love you. Because if you love yourself, and if you got a, a doggy like my baby, who I know loves me much, that's all you need. That's really all you need. Anyway, that's all I got for you guys today. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Y'all have a good one.